Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear students this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelor's in education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 this video lecture is based on approaches of educational technology and here in this lecture we will be talking about an introduction of systems approach this video lecture is recorded by dr iram khan the course coordinator and the presenter of this video is dr iram khan from jamia millia islamia new delhi the academic expert or the reviewer of this video is Professor Jaseem Ahmed from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video is produced under the project DTH Swayam Prabha Channels of Ministry of Education, Government of India. Hello my dear students, I am Dr. Iram Khan, Assistant Professor at Institute of Advanced Studies and Education, Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today I am going to talk about a topic which is related to approaches of educational technology and this lecture is going to base on the introduction of systems approach which is a very important approach of educational technology let us start the session with first the objectives of the lesson the objectives of this session are to discuss the meaning and definitions of a system elaborate the types of systems and describe the parameters of a system. So this concept of systems approach is relatively a new approach which has emerged in the field of education for managing its affairs. If we go towards the history of this particular approach, this concept originated during the World War II as a result of the research and development in the context of the complex man-machine system. And what happened gradually that it was applied in the areas of industry and management as well. And in the later times or later years, it has been introduced in the field of education as a strategy to manage, to control and also towards the improvement of the processes and the products of education. And if we talk about its application, the systems approach is based on the systems concept and its basic parameters. So in this particular lecture, we will be talking about the idea and the concept of system, what exactly we mean by a system and then what are the parameters which are taken care of when we talk about the system and also the systems approach. What is the meaning of the term system? So this is the first thing which we are going to discuss here in the session. This term system signifies a connotation of wholeness. And in this wholeness, we can also find some sort of interrelationships between the parts or elements and all these elements which are actually interrelated they are having some sort of self-regulation so this is uh, somehow the meaning which we can give to a system but to explain this term in a better way let us try to see few of those definitions which are given by very uh, renowned educationists and in the light of those definitions we can come to a proper definition or the carving out towards the proper meaning of the term system so the first definition which i would like to discuss is the definition which is given by r l elkoff in the year 1971 according to him a system is the set of interrelated and interdependent elements so here what he is talking about that a system is basically a set of elements which are interrelated which have some sort of relation between themselves and also they are interdependent so one 
element is depending on the other in order to make a system or in order to work in a proper way. So this is the first definition. The second definition is given by Rob in the year 1973. According to him, a system is a systematic organization of the elements that operate in a unique way. So you can see that here also the systematic organization is being talked about and the, what, what exactly uh, this systematic organization uh, is going to do. This organization is going to work on the elements which are going to operate in a unique way. So according to Rob, the definition says that a system is a systematic organization of the elements that operate in a unique way. So that's why we can say that this particular uh, arrangement can be considered to a system because it's operating in a unique way. Now let us see the other definition which is given by uh, Jalaluddin in the year 1981. According to him, a system may be defined as a dynamic, complex, integrated whole. So, a system is a dynamic, complex, integrated whole consisting of a self-regulating pattern of interrelated and interdependent elements organized to achieve the predetermined and specified objectives. If you see this particular definition given by Jalaluddin, you can find that this definition tries to explain a little bit more about a system where he says that it's a dynamic uh, organization or uh, systematic organization. It can be a complex uh, system. It can be integrated whole means there will be separate parts which are clubbed together to make a integrated whole and it should be self-regulating. The interrelation in an interdependence is a must. So here he also talks about that a system always works on some predetermined and specified objectives. So if we have got a machine which is uh, intended to make uh, to prepare some sort of coffee or uh, any other thing, then the objective is that this machine will be making some coffee. So the entire system, the entire organization of the elements are going to work together and the outcome will be produced, which is what it was actually specified in the beginning itself to make a cup of coffee or maybe various cups of coffee. coffee. So here, it was a trivial example, but it can give you an idea that what exactly we mean by a system. So some sort of integrated uh, mechanism, which is interdependent and also is having a predetermined set of objectives, which can be considered to a system. And uh, these definitions actually make it a little clear that how we, uh, we can uh, mean uh, or how we can define the term system. So we have seen three of the definitions and we have tried to understand what exactly is the meaning of system. So let us try to make a list of the characteristics or the features which are considered to be the characteristic features of a system. And if uh, we try to make a list. What can be the components of these lists? The first component can be that a system is a general term applicable to many fields, including instruction and education. Because we can find if there is no system in any of the areas or fields, there will be a lot of disturbance. There will be a lot of nuisance. So we have to find the system it is somehow applicable everywhere and education and the area of instruction is not something which is other than the areas or fields. So a system is a general term applicable to many fields including instruction and education is the first feature. Then 
system is a dynamic and integrated whole. It is not merely a sum total of its parts or elements. So a system, although it is made up of various parts, but the entire machinery or the entire system, which is having a lot of components or parts, the intention is to work on the same objective. So it should be dynamic and it should work as an integrated whole. Then the next uh, feature can be that it represents a complex but systematic organization of interrelated and interdependent parts or elements. So we cannot say that any of the elements can work in isolation. Every element is depending on the other. So in a system or in a, even in an organization, you can see that there are various people who are working and every single person who is the part of this organization has got some duties. And these duties are delegated by the higher authorities and they are supposed to work in order to, to run the entire system or the organization in the smooth way or in a very proper delegated way. So, the system represents a complex but systematic organization of interrelated and interdependent parts or elements can be the next feature. Then, in a system, all the parts or elements have their respective roles which have to be specified in relation to each other and in relation to the purpose which is to be achieved by the entire system. So as we have seen in the earlier point that every person who is working in an organization has got some duties. And in the same way, if we talk about a machinery, all the parts or the elements have got some roles. And if that particular part is not working properly, then you can see that the entire system is having some issues, some problem. So for smooth running of a system, it is necessary that we, uh, we should ensure that all the parts which are the elements of this particular system work in a proper way. If we take an example of a school and if in, in the school um, various uh, people are working, there are teachers, there are uh, office staff, there is a principal and many more officials. So if one official or two officials are not working properly in, in order to actually comply to the duties, you can see that there is a nuisance or there is some sort of disturbance which, which can be seen in that particular area. And until unless we fix that issue, we cannot find the entire system working in a proper way. So this is somehow uh, showing that how in a system the parts are also very important so that it can work as a whole. Then a system as a whole functions more effectively and achieves better results than any subsystem or part or combination of the effects of individual parts. Now again if you see uh, the earlier point where we were talking about that every part has to work in a proper way. If one part is not complying the duties, there will be effect on the entire system. Now, if we make it reverse and we, we see that there is just one part which is working, suppose the principal is very uh, properly working, but rest of the uh, staff is not working properly. In that case, again, there will be a very difficult situation and the system is considered to be the system of the educational uh, organization will be considered to be ill working in, a, in an ill manner because here only one part, one individual part is working in a proper way, but rest of the parts are not actually in consonance. So we have to make sure that every, each and every part should work in a proper way and every part should be 
working together to achieve the better results. Every part has to become a whole and then this system is going to work in a very proper manner. So the principal, the teachers, the office staff and rest of every person who is responsible for the educational activities should work in a very proper way. Then only we will see a better running school or any of the organization. Next uh, feature can be that a system is a self-governing, self-maintaining and self-regulating structure. This is somehow again a very important point because we, the system uh, gains some sort of support from the outside in the beginning but then it should be self-governing, self-maintaining and self-regulating then only it can sustain for a longer time. So this is again a peculiar feature of a system. Then the functioning of the system is aimed to achieve the specific purposes or stipulated objectives. These stipulated objectives are created or are designed in the beginning or maybe when uh, we think of a system, then only the, these uh, objectives are framed and the entire system which is designed or which is functioning is aiming or is aimed towards achieving those specific purposes or these stipulated objectives. Like in case of an uh, educational institution, the purpose, the aim is to educate the students. So the entire system since the beginning and um, like once the school or college starts, the aim is towards providing best possible sort of education to the children, which is the stipulated objective, which is already framed in the beginning. So in this way, we can see that the, these are few of those uh, important characteristics which can give a proper meaning or uh, will help in defining a system in a proper way. So in this way, the term system may be understood as a self-maintaining and self-regulating device consisting of interrelated and interacting elements or self-governing systems operating as a whole to achieve the predetermined purposes or goals with utmost efficiency, economy and productivity. So if you can give a proper meaning to each and every word which is uh, given here in the form of giving a proper definition to a system, you can find that all these adjectives work together and they formulate a proper definition, a proper meaning of a system which is responsible for running uh, and uh, uh, delivering the proper results in any of the situations. And education is also one of the situations where we can find a system. Whenever we see towards any of the area, we can find a system going on. And if there is anything which is uh, having some sort of difficulty, we can see that what exactly is the element we have to go for and we have to search for that particular element which is having some issue and we have to fix that so that the entire system runs in a proper way in which uh, the stipulated objectives are willing like the for completion of the stipulated objective for which the entire system is built. Okay, So this is the uh, explanation or you can say a clear-cut definition of a system. Now what are the different types of systems? The systems may be classified into two broad categories and these categories can be the natural system and the man-made system. What is a natural system? any of the systems which we can name like the solar system, a human body, like our body is also a system. Human body is consisting of various systems 
and all these systems like the reproductive system, the respiratory system, the digestive system, the circulatory system and all the other systems. They all, all together come around and make a human body which is in, in total a, an example of a best system. Then all the creations of nature and even if we see uh, towards anything which is naturally uh, prepared or naturally uh, found, any biological mechanism, everywhere we can find a proper system happening. Otherwise, that particular phenomenon or um, thing is not actually uh, possible to exist. And most of the times, the functioning is beyond the control of human beings and therefore, their behavior cannot be predicted or determined in a very precise manner. So, the natural system is somehow a little bit difficult to control by human beings. And in few of the cases, you can see that it is beyond the control or beyond the prediction or level of the human beings. So, after the natural system, we can see the man-made system or the machines the man-made machines or the systems which are uh, which are created by human beings in due course of the time, like the telephone, the television, uh, the refrigerator, or any other machine, the washing machine, the dishwasher, and any sort of machine. You name it and you will find a system. Every single appliance which you can find in your household is having a system. And when you go to any of those organizations like your school or college or a post office or a bank, every single institution is following a system. Every educational institution is following a system and they all are deliberately designed or devised in a peculiar way. Why? Because they have to work in a in a specified way. That is why they are deliberately designed or devised systems. The elements and the functioning of these systems are very much controllable because they are all human made. So that's why the human beings can make, can control uh, these systems. And in because of these features, their behavior can be predicted and determined in a precise manner. As we have seen in the case of the natural system, because human beings have not created those, the nature has created the, those systems. So prediction in a very precise manner is very difficult. And also human control is not possible in most of the cases over the natural systems. But in case of the man-made systems, we can see that humans or human beings have got full control. So these systems, which are the man-made systems, are fully controllable. And they, the prediction of the outcomes can also be seen to be very much precise. Let us talk about the parameters of a system. Any system can be described in terms of four basic parameters. What are these? The first parameter is the input. Then the process. The next is the output and then the next is the environmental context. So these four are the basic parameters of any system. You can see here on the screen this flow chart or flow diagram which can actually give you an idea that how these four parameters work together. What exactly is the meaning of the first parameter? which is input. Basically, input refers to what is put into the system from outside. Whatever we are inserting, that is the input. Then the next is the process. So process is what goes on in a system. What is actually taking place? That is the process. Then we have got the output. Output 
is the product of a system which after the process is complete what we are receiving what we are getting that is the output so that is why it is the product and what exactly we mean by the environmental context basically this is the fourth parameter and it refers to all those conditions the factors and also the constraints which are related with the physical and social environment in which the system operates so a system cannot operate beyond the limits and the boundaries of its environmental context and also if we can see few of those constraints these constraints are also very much important so any system cannot operate beyond the limits and the boundaries of its environmental context and the constraints so these basic parameters of a system basically are very much important when we talk about the working or the functionality of a system and in this uh, flow chart you can actually see the entire flow how the input process output and the environment or the environmental context have got relation or how these four parameters are related to each other so for the understanding of the nature and the working of any of the systems let us see one of a example which can actually better illustrate how a system uh, is uh, working or how it works and also what is the nature of any of the systems so let us take the example of a factory which is making cars and this uh, factory let's uh, uh, assume that is uh, uh, situated in a part of our country which is in the north uh, let us take the example of gurgaon so this car factory is situated in gurgaon and we all know that because it's a car factory so it's a man machine system where there will be machinery which are actually handled by the human beings and this entire system is created by human beings so the goal of this factory is to produce the cars all the workers the they can be technical workers they can be the part of the management the management personnel all the machines the materials all these things are the parts or the components or elements of the system which is desiring to produce cars here the man or all those humans which are working and the material which are employed in the production of cars can be referred to as inputs and what is going inside the factory going on like uh, in in this particular factory for converting the material into the product can be referred to as a process and the production of the cars and all the other accessories whatever is being produced here in this factory will be the output then the factory which operates in a definite or a peculiar social and physical environment which is also controlled by various environmental constraints like the weather how the uh, the ventilation is uh, provided how the wages are provided the location of the factory if it is properly locally located connected with the places where the people live who are working in the factory all these factors can come under the uh, the physical environment which is controlled either by the environmental uh, constraints or even the facilitations so in this way by this example of a car factory in gurgaon we can understand 
the various parameters the first one which was input then we have seen the process then the output and then the next is the environmental context or the environmental situations so this these four are the heart and soul or you can say the most important things to understand if we want to understand the system now let us switch to the systems approach what exactly we mean by a systems approach we have seen what exactly is a system now let us connect what we have understood about system to understand what is a systems approach systems approach is a technique based which is based on the systems concept so systems approach is a technique which is based on the systems concept and its basic parameters for understanding predicting and controlling the operation of a system in a given environment and for for what this entire process is being uh, is is working to achieve the predetermined objectives in an intelligent efficient and also the economical way in this approach which is the systems approach a problem is taken into account in its totality not in a fragmented way basically the problem is taken in its totality and the attempts are made to solve the problem in the context of the predetermined objectives or we have seen that there were the stipulated objectives which are set in the beginning itself so the why why this problem is taken the purpose is to solve the problem where the context is already set and the the context is related to the predetermined objectives and the next one is to for the functioning for the functioning of its interrelated parts and the whole system under given environmental constraints what exactly it means that the entire system works together for what purpose for completing or for achieving the predetermined objectives and this functioning the functioning of the parts the interrelated parts of this entire system or the whole is basically governed by the environmental constraints which are always there whenever we we find a system we can see that there are few of the things which are facilitating the system to work in a proper way and there are many things which can be the constraints which can be hurdles which we have to overcome which the system has to overcome in order to run in a proper manner so this is the basic or the introduction of the systems approach we will be discussing a little bit more on the various aspects of systems approach in few of the other sessions which will be uh, following this particular session now we have come to the end of this session let us try to recapitulate what we have studied here in this particular introductory part of the systems approach we have seen uh, the basic system what exactly the term system means the term system can be understood as a self maintained and self regulating device consisting of interrelated and interacting elements or self governing systems operating as a whole to achieve the predetermined purposes or goals with utmost efficiency economy and productivity the systems may be classified into two broad categories the first category is the natural system like all those systems which we are finding in the nature like the solar system the human body or any of the animal animal or plant body and the next category is the man made or man machine system 
any of the devices, any of the appliances which you can see uh, in, at, in your home, like a refrigerator, a television, a telephone, and even the educational systems. They all are considered to be the man-made systems. And in contrast to the natural system, the elements and the functioning of the, uh, the man-made systems are uh, very much and can say that quite controllable and therefore their behavior, the, the behavior of the man-made system can be predicted and determined in a precise manner. Then we have also seen that what are the uh, basic parameters. We have seen that there are four basic parameters of a system um, which are the input. Um, basically, what is the input? What is put into the system? That is the input. Then the process. What goes on? What is going on in a system? That is the process. Then the output. What we receive? What is the product of a system that is the output and the environmental context which means that all those conditions the factors and the constraints which are related with the physical and the social environment in which the system operates and after all these details of a system we try to introduce to get the introduction of the systems approach done we have seen that the systems approach is a technique based on the systems concept and its basic parameters in its basic functioning it tries to have a reasonable control over input processes um, the outputs and the environmental constraints the parameters of the system for achieving the specified objectives. If a system meets the requirement of its objectives, it is maintained and if it does not, then we have to modify the system because the purpose is to basically get the specified objectives. So if we, the system is not uh, giving us the proper output, then we have to modify it and we have to uh, make the system uh, properly maintained or created in order to deliver the specified objectives. So this was uh, the introductory part of the systems approach. Uh, we will be talking more about the systems approach and its parts in uh, further sessions. So for today, this much is enough. These are two of those references and the suggested further readings which can be uh, referred by you all if you want to uh, know more about this particular topic. For today, this is all. Uh, let us meet with each other in another session, another time. Thank you so much for your time. Dear students, you were watching a video on the approaches of educational technology. And in this lecture, we discuss the introduction of systems approach. This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.